Hey guys, welcome folks. We are learning Java object oriented concepts. So in a previous class, we understood what is object, why we need an object and what we can do using an object, right? In this session, we're going to talk about inheritance. Inheritance is very, very important concept, not only in Java, but in a lot of other object oriented programming. And the concept is pretty same. If you understand this uh, in Java, you will can, you can relate the same concept with any other object oriented programming. So what we're going to learn in today's session, we're going to learn what exactly the inheritance means. Then we're going to talk about super class, subclass and extend and final keyword. So this super class, subclass, extend and final keyword is basically how we handle the inheritance. So it's, it's very straightforward. So don't worry. Just uh, let's get started. Quick introduction about myself, myself Saurabh. I'm working in an industry for 11 years now, uh, all the time as an automator. And I've worked with all these product companies, service companies, and so on. Today's topic is Java inheritance. So in this example, I'm trying to highlight what the inheritance means in our day-to-day -day life. So to, let's try to relate it with an example. In, in this, I have tried to highlight one family in which you see this son is inheriting some quality from his father. Let's say he is inheriting eyes, ears and the hairs are like her mom or maybe height is also like her mom right so there are a couple of qualities which he is in it inheriting from fathers couple of qualities which he is inheriting from mother so what does it mean is in a real life also we know what inheritance means so if i try to relate this with today's topic let's say i'm saying son inherit something from father so for father i'll say father is a super class from whom we are inheriting, that's a super class. The son, the one who is inheriting is a subclass. Sub, you understand, if you want to relate sub, then this, you, you understand it in this way. The one who inherits is a subclass. The one from whom we are inheriting is a super class, okay? So with this example, we're gonna see how the inheritance helps us. So <clears throat> let's take this example. In a previous example, we saw how the object helps us to communicate between classes, right? Now here, in a, on, a, on a similar basis, try to understand that I have a class A and I have some attributes and methods and variables inside a class A. Now I have a class B. Now, class B inherits from class A. So let's consider here class B is kind of son, right? So here I'm calling class B as a subclass, whereas a class A is a superclass, nothing but father, right? Now, how do I inherit? There must be some way, right? So the way is using extend keyword. I'll show you how, how we exactly do that. So using an extend keyword, Java understands that the class B is inheriting from class A, right? So let's see a practical implementation of it now. So let me create a new class. So in Java programming package, I'm gonna create a class. And let's say, I'll give it as name as father, just for your understanding. Or let me say class, class A. Okay, finish. And then I'm gonna create one more class for you guys. So let's say new class, class B. And I'll have a main method here. Okay, so I have two classes, class A and class B, like in our PPT like in our example, okay. Now let me do one thing, in our class A, we'll have an int variable, let's say Saurabh. No, that's a bad example. Let's say ABC equal to 10. Let's stick with our regular examples. And, uh, and uh, let me also create one small method, let's say void add number, Result equal to ABC plus let's say 20. I'm just doing anything random, guys. Okay, result. I need to initiate result. Cool. Okay, and then what we do? Let's print here. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you something. Uh, it, it's gonna throw me an error if I try to print here. 
and I want you guys to find out that reason and comment me why it may throw me an error. Okay. So let's say value of equal to plus. If you do control space, then uh, it gives you the access of all your uh, variables. So the error I was talking about. So if I put this statement here, it's going to throw me an error. You see here, and I want you guys to understand why this error is and comment me in the section so that uh, I, I can I can clarify you there. Okay, so I'm deleting that. So now I have I have two things. I have two variables in this class and one method in this class. So just to intend, uh, I can use tab so that now it looks better. Okay, so this is my class A. Now let's go back to class B. Save it. Now the question comes: I want to access this A, B, C, and result from class B. How do I do that? In a previous example, we understood by creating an object, right? So let me try that first, and let's see whether that works for us. How do we do class name? So what's the class name? Class a right obj equal to new keyword class a right this is the now if i say obj dot now i have c a b c and result variable and add number so i have access correct this is the one way now let me remove that we already understood that using an object now using inheritance so here class B, if class B wants to inherit everything which is in class A, which means he wants to use that. What we need to use is extend keyword. And then we have to tell which class you would like to extend. What is that? Class A. Okay. Am I missing anything? Okay, so I'm getting some error here. And what is that? Because the keyword is extends, not extend. Okay, so Java is case sensitive, remember that. And also all the reserve keywords uh, will be highlighted like this. If you see public, class, static, word, all this, these are reserve keywords. So you can't use this reserve keywords for your variable name or any other things. Okay, so here class B extends class A. What does it mean? This is inheritance guys. So I'm saying class B is extending class A, which means I'm trying to inherit everything which is in class A. Now let's try to access the things inside a class A. There is one way by creating an object, right? Object of class A, which we already learned in our previous session. Now what I'm gonna do here is, I'm gonna create a object of class B. How do we do that? Class name, obj, keyword, again a class name, Right, and here we go. So I have created an object of class B, correct? Now, if I say obj dot, now you see, it is giving me an access of attributes and methods from class A. So if you see dot abc is an int variable, which we have defined it in class A, but not in class B. And how we are getting that? The reason we are getting that is because we are extending it to class A, which means we are inheriting. And I'm saying, Hey, whatever the quality of class A, I want that in class B also. So if I try to print something, so let's say, see, so control space, and I'll say, value from class A is, and here I'll concatenate obj dot, and uh, let's say results. I'm just trying to print see result variable i haven't even mentioned anything here but it's understanding it because we are extending it now right now let me run this program the value from class a is zero why because we haven't initiated that result if i initiate it let's say with 500 in class a and come back to class b here in class b we have created an object of class b and now if i run this once again now it will show me 500. 
right similarly i can also call the method add number which is again in class a and the reason we are getting an access of add number from the object which is of class b is because we extended it if i don't extend this if i just remove this let's say right which is our now regular class now you see it will start showing me an error this is fine because i'm creating an object for a class b but now here it will say i don't understand what this add number is because that add number is nowhere in the in this particular class and the reason it was allowing earlier because now we are extending it to class a so this is inheritance and the reason we do inheritance if you ask me practically is to minimize the duplicate code basically to enhance uh, the reusability of a code right if if you if someone has written some piece of information in the class a like a complex calculation and uh, he created a method for it calculate compound interest for a home loan let's say and he created that method in a class a and i need a similar calculation in my class b i am i don't want to copy paste that code here no that's not a correct way if i'm doing that copy paste which means tomorrow if there is a change needed in that code i'll have to do it in class a and class b at both places right but rather than that what i should do is i extend that class b to class a and with that i straight away get an access of that method right this is the one way now now if i try to run this program you will see the value of results because now it is basically calling that method which is in class a it is abc is 10 adding 20 30 and here it is printing the value 30 so this first print is coming from class a the second print is coming from class b right you understood guys so this is an inheritance now you ask me saurabh does java allow multiple inheritance so let's say i you see i have some more classes here so let me try this so i'll say class one space save see it is it is showing me some error what is that it it is not allowing me or it is throwing me an error right so java doesn't support multiple inheritance okay what does it mean is you can't extend it for multiple classes at once we're going to address that issue we're going to understand what the multiple inheritance is in our further sessions but yeah as of now i want you guys to understand what is inheritance and if someone asks you in an interview you shouldn't be explaining it like a bookish keyword or sorry bookish uh, definition just explain them drawing a diagram on a whiteboard saying like sir can i try it or can i try to explain it on the on the whiteboard or can i write a code and explain it in that way you can explain it better give an example of this family like the one which we discussed like father son mother right and the person who is listening to you will be will be having you know will get more confident about uh, your your understanding of the basic concepts of object oriented programming so yeah that's it for this session and uh, in the next session we're going to talk about an, another object oriented programming concept